the governments have have de- tried to demonetize gold, and what they've done is now they're pricing gold in the currencies. So yeah, the price of gold goes up and down in dollars. It goes up and down in euros and yen and pounds, but it doesn't move. What goes up and down is the currency. When you see gold going up, hundred dollars an ounce, two hundred, five hundred, a thousand, whatever, all that is is a function of the value of the dollar declining. The dollar is losing purchasing power. It's losing value versus the standard, and the standard is gold. Gold is the bedrock. It does not change. It's the currencies that change. Gold pulled back slightly on Tuesday, but remains a buy-on-the-dip opportunity as the market trades sideways. This reflects ongoing uncertainty and risk appetite. Support levels are around $2,630 and $2,600, suggesting the market stabilizes after recent volatility. Financial analyst and commentator Bill Holter highlights gold's unique qualities, noting that it cannot go bankrupt or default, unlike fiat currencies backed by debt. Historically, currencies such as the peso and pound were derivatives of gold, with their names reflecting their weight in the precious metal. This historical context underscores gold's role as a stable asset during economic turmoil. As of Wednesday's North American session, the gold price remains under pressure near $2,620. The precious metal has faced challenges due to a stronger U.S. dollar, gaining traction as traders adjust expectations for the Federal Reserve's upcoming November meeting, pricing out the likelihood of a larger-than-usual interest rate cut of 50 basis points. Holter explains that when the price of gold rises in dollars, euros, or yen, it is not the value of gold itself that changes. Instead, it is the currency losing purchasing power. Gold serves as a constant bedrock or standard amidst the fluctuations of fiat currencies. In a time when economic stability is questioned and currency values fluctuate, gold remains a reliable haven for investors looking to protect their wealth. Holter's insights reaffirm the significance of precious metals as safe assets in an increasingly unpredictable market. Make sure to tune in for our expert analysis. Don't miss out on future content. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay in the loop. Your support is greatly appreciated. The, the reason an ounce of gold that was minted 100 years ago is still an ounce, is still that same ounce of gold. It hasn't gotten bigger. It hasn't gotten smaller. It's still just an ounce of gold. Uh, if you bought, I don't know, name umpteen different currencies 100 years ago, and you actually, you know, you got the paper for it, you have the paper, whatever they are, uh, those currencies... There, I mean, there's been a lot of currencies that have gone to zero, don't exist anymore. And, and that's simply, you know, a collectible item if it's in perfect shape. I mean, Confederate dollars, there's an example. It's still just a Confederate dollar. It was a Confederate dollar then. It's still a Confederate dollar now, but it has no value. The, the whole idea, when I, when I say an ounce of gold today was an ounce of gold 100 years ago, the, the point I'm trying to make is... It can never, ever go bankrupt. It can never, ever default. Every currency on the planet is fiat. Every fiat currency is backed by debt. Now, are there nations that that are going to go, go belly up, go bankrupt? Yeah, absolutely. And also gold doesn't. It used to be that currency, because currencies were derivatives of gold. Think about the names. The peso, uh, the pound. The pound sterling specifically yeah the pound sterling right the the lira all of the the peseta all of these currencies their names invoke weight in other words how much it actually weighs uh all of these currencies every currency with the exception of the euro i believe all currencies were derivatives of gold and they were they were they were priced in gold and what's happened is the governments have have de- tried to demonetize gold, and what they've done is now they're pricing gold in the currencies. So yeah, the price of gold goes up and down in dollars. It goes up and down in euros and yen and pounds, but it doesn't move. What goes up and down is the currency. When you see gold going up, hundred dollars an ounce, two hundred, five hundred, a thousand, whatever, all that is is a function of the value of the dollar declining. The dollar is losing purchasing power. It's losing value versus the standard, and the standard is gold. Gold is the bedrock. It does not change. It's the currencies that change.
While the national debt issue took a backseat during the pandemic as the government spent significantly to combat COVID-19, this dynamic will likely shift in the coming year. A significant portion of Trump's 2017 tax cut law is set to expire, which could result in sharp tax increases for millions of Americans unless new legislation is introduced. However, extending these tax cuts may require substantial new borrowing, further exacerbating the nation's debt crisis. Financial analyst Bill Holter asserts that an economic collapse is inevitable due to rising debt levels. He posits that the collapse may adhere to constitutional guidelines if Trump wins the presidency again. Additionally, the report highlights that some of Trump's economic plan's most expensive elements include ending taxes on overtime pay and Social Security benefits. On the other hand, expanding the child tax credit emerges as Vice President Kamala Harris's second most costly policy. To generate revenue, Trump proposes imposing heavy tariffs on imports, while Vice President Harris's strategy focuses on increasing taxes for large corporations and individuals earning more than $400,000 annually. As these tax cuts expire, the potential economic fallout from renewed discussions about national debt and taxation could reshape the political landscape. With rising debt levels and divergent approaches to fiscal policy, the coming year may prove pivotal for the U.S. economy, underscoring the need for strategic decision-making to avoid a financial crisis. Let's get back to the interview. Mathematically, the Treasury's toast. I mean, we're at the point now paying over a trillion dollars a year. It'll be at $1.5 trillion by this time next year uh, in interest alone. And that is well more now than what we pay uh, or spend each year for the military. And our military spends more than all the militaries combined for the rest of the world. So our interest expense, as far as compared to uh, receipts, what's the number now? 25%, 30%? We're at the point where mathematically we are going to default. There is, there is. I've said this before, the only possibility of the math being wrong or the math being repaired would be the second coming of Jesus Christ. And that's not Donald Trump. I mean, the alternative... And let me say something. First off, I still not sure there's going to be an election. I think every day that goes by, more and more things happen that, that you know, rate or lower the odds that we're even going to have an election. Who knows? But in my opinion, if Harris gets in, it's our, our, the republic is completely over and it will, it will collapse with no rule of law. It'll collapse with their rule of law. Um, if Donald Trump wins, the collapse is still going to come, but we will go down under the Constitution and the rule of law will still prevail. Now, as far as, you know, is there anything that can be done? The answer is a flat no. It's already been done. This cake is baked. It's on fire. Uh, you need a fire extinguisher for this thing. The, the uh, There is no way out. And let me just add this from a, from a human standpoint. While the Great Depression was horrible. You know, a lot of people lost everything. From a society standpoint, it was a much better society. You had neighbors that were willing to help neighbors. In today's world, and not in all locations, but let me just say in the urban areas, neighbors are going to are gonna pick clean uh, other neighbors that have fallen just like vultures. Now, you do have some good people out there. Look what's going on in North Carolina. You have people trying to help left and right and what's going on? They're being hindered. They're being hindered. And you've even got uh, local sheriffs now saying, we're going to uh, arrest, uh, you know, federal workers if they get in the way. If, if, if you're not going to help, don't get in the way. Don't be part of the problem. Just get out of the way. So uh, the other thing from, from the Great Depression, we didn't have a government that was broke. We didn't have a government that was bankrupt. At this point in time, we have a treasury that's spending over a trillion dollars interest per year, and we have a Federal Reserve that all you have to do is look at their numbers. Their balance sheet is now uh, upside down. I mean, they've they're they're losing money on a weekly basis because interest rates have gone up, and they've lost. Uh, they had, I think, the number I saw was they had sixty five billion of equity, holding up nine trillion dollars of assets. But now, because interest rates have gone up, the, the, the bond portfolios have dropped $200, $250 billion. So that $65 billion is gone. So you have nothing. Gold's enduring appeal as a secure asset remains evident, particularly as economic uncertainties and potential fiscal challenges loom. Its stability amidst fluctuating fiat currencies makes it a preferred choice for investors looking to safeguard their wealth. 
With discussions surrounding the national debt and upcoming tax changes becoming more prominent, the market will likely keep a close eye on how these factors affect both gold prices and the overall economic landscape in the coming year. Given rising debt levels and potential tax changes, how do you see gold's role evolving in individuals' and institutions' investment strategies? Share your perspective in the comments section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.